stained glass window is made up of individual pieces of colored glass that has been cut to patterns and then assembled in a matrix of extruded lead called Kames. The lead resembles a capital letter H lying on its side and the glass is fit into either side of the back-to-back -back bracket cavities separated by a vertical member called the heart of the lead. The stained glass window begins with an in-scale drawing of the artist's interpretation of the subject matter. This is referred to as a sketch. Most stained glass artists depict an idea for a window in watercolor because the translucency of the medium corresponds to this characteristic of colored glass. The finalized and accepted sketch becomes the working drawing for the fabrication of the window. With the window sizes outlined on tracing paper, the sketch is projected to full scale onto the paper using an overhead projector. The subject matter imagery is then traced section by section. When each part of the window has been traced to full scale, the tracing sections are hung on a wall together in the same special relationship that they will occupy in the window frame. That is, allowing for the parts of the frame structure itself or any short span of wall space that may separate the sections. At this point, the full scale tracing is adjusted to make sure that the imagery is properly aligned and the gesture of lines or figures reads as a complete composition. The window next needs to be patterned. Using the tracings as a guide and the old-fashioned method of carbon paper copying, two further sets of drawings are made. A thick, white manila type paper is laid out to size and then carbon paper is laid atop it. Ordinary brown paper is then placed upon these layers and carbon paper is laid upon the brown paper. The tracings are then placed on the top of all of these layers and the layers are secured in place. The outlines of the windows, representing full glass size, are traced with mechanical implements and then the interior lines, representing at once the outlines of each piece of glass and the leading lines, are traced by hand. Each piece of glass is given a number and other identifying information are written on at this point. The carbon copies made in this process have different roles. The brown paper drawing will be used in the assembling of the window with lead, called glazing or leading up. The manila paper will be cut apart and will become the patterns for each piece of glass in the window. Patterns cannot be cut out with ordinary scissors. An allowance must be made for what is called the heart of the lead, because the minute fractions of an inch of all of the hearts together will affect the size of the window. When the patterns are cut out with these shears, the allowance for the heart of the lead is made in the size of each piece of glass. Once the patterns are cut out, they are laid out onto the tracing paper in preparation for selecting the glass. Using the original sketch as a color key, glass is selected for the various parts of the composition, such as the background or clothing, and flesh for the figures. The person selecting the glass creates a color composition in a daylight situation that resembles as closely as possible the window's placement in the church. He or she considers from what compass direction the source of light originates, whether there are buildings, trees, or other issues in the landscape that obscure or diffuse the light, and at what time of day the window gets the most light. The patterns are laid out into the four sheets of colored glass and are then ready to be cut to exact size. The pattern is held to the glass, and the cutter scores the glass following the edge of the paper. The glass is then broken apart along the score line. Sometimes glass pliers or the teeth of the cutter are used to refine the outline. Once the pieces are all cut, the individual pieces are laid out on their patterns on the light table in preparation for glazing. At this point, the window is checked for color accuracy to avoid having to correct mistakes after painting and glazing. In the window being made here, only the inscriptions need to be painted. To achieve a consistent Gothic text, latex stencils were made and adhered to the pieces of glass. Vitreous glass paint was then applied and allowed to surface dry. After the stencils are peeled back, the 
glass pieces with the stenciled letters are kiln fired to about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. This fuses the paint permanently to the glass. In the glazing or assembling process, the brown paper drawing is secured to the workbench and two of the perimeter leads are laid in place. The window is then assembled piece by piece, working out of the original right angle of the perimeter leads. The lead canes are stretched a little before use and are measured around each piece of glass and to a precise fit. As the pieces are fit together, the glazier makes sure that the lead and glass closely follow the drawing. Horseshoe nails are used to hold the assemblage together as the glazing proceeds. Once the window is completely glazed and the two remaining perimeter leads are in place, the assemblage is measured and squared off and the lead joints are flattened. Flux is applied to each lead joint and the joints are then soldered on both sides. Before the back of the window is soldered, the window is placed on an easel against daylight for a final check of the color relationships. After glazing, the window needs to be waterproof. This process is called cementing and simply involves pushing a loosened putty mixture underneath the lead with a scrub brush. This is done on both sides of the window. After putty has been forced under the leads, the leads are gently pressed down with a putty knife and the excess putty is cleaned off with a scrub brush, pencil point sharpened dowels and finally with a powdery substance called whiting that is at once a drying agent for the putty and cleaning agent for the glass and lead. Reinforcement bars then need to be attached to the window sections. The bars are cut to size and are sometimes bent in a vise to follow major linear elements in a composition. The ends of the bar are ground away to allow them to fit into the window frames and then they are fit to and soldered onto the interior side of the window. After the rebars have been attached, the window is cleaned again to remove any excess putty and flux. The windows are now ready for installation. The framing system of the windows is designed engineered and installed by Bio Studio using thermal brake frames manufactured by the J. Sussman Company of New York. The frames allow for the installation of the stained glass on the interior and protection glazing on the exterior. At the installation site, the interior side of the plate glass and the exterior side of the stained glass is first cleaned. Each section is then fit into its corresponding frame section and secured in place with a snap-on glazing bead. The interior side of the stained glass is then wiped clean and the installation is complete.